Hopefully you've got your mind right. You've made a choice on what type of player you want to be today. You decide the passion, the energy, the level of execution, the physical and mental toughness you display. It is your choice. Today is a test of our character. It's a test of our culture. Some of you have been around here a long time. A lot of pain, a lot of sorrow, man. You make the choice how good you want to be. I want it for you. The only way we get that done is you go really hard. Every day, I don't care how many games you win, how many, you stay humble, you stay hungry, you keep getting better every day. Okay, that's what really good players do and good teams do. How about those nuts? All right, get your helmets, let's go. He keeps it real. Make him throw it there. The ball will take you there. You've got to play the curl. One thing I'll say about Coach Ash, he's very approachable. One second equals 10 yards. That's someone who's been in a few special team meetings. Coach Ash, he's a, he's a competitor. You know, he, don't, he don't give up for anything. You know, we've been counting out. Let's go set the tone early, guys. Yes, we got to get 10 units strong today in your effort, in your execution, and your flat-out toughness. Uh, Coach Ash is all about discipline and paying attention to the details. Chin that ball, chin that ball, chin that ball, Norway. Since I've been here, you know, he's just always trying to make the next move, his best move. You know, he's always moving forward and a uh, real positive thinking coach. He's always trying to think positive, not about the past, you know, losing games, stuff like that. We just, you know, on the, on the future rise. That's all we think about. Okay, and you usually have competitive spirit if you're that type of a guy. He's very football most of the time. Whenever you talk to him, he's really focused in on winning. Next rep, go, go, hurry up, we gotta go. And he loves comp competing, competition. So I've never actually had a coach like that before that just loves competing all the time. Chin it, chin it, outside arm, outside arm. Some of the things I like about Coach Ash is the love and passion that he has for the game. Um, you'll see Coach Ash here early in the morning. He'll be the last one to leave and the first one here in the building. Uh, Coach Ash is about his business, and he's going to make sure you're always prepared. And like, whenever I think of Coach Ash, I always think of prior, pre prior preparation prevents poor performance. And I feel like he's a guy that really makes, wants to make sure you prepare. And that's like our big thing right now. We're just going to prepare the best so we can play the best and do the best. And uh, overall, Coach Ash has been a great guy. He's been able to like really help people laser focus in and help. He's been a leader in like changing the culture that we're trying to develop. He doesn't do no shortcuts or nothing with you, and he doesn't uh, beat around the bush. And um, he'll tell you how it is when he needs to, and he'll, he'll get you right when he needs to. Hey, I love this football team. Every day, I don't care how many games you win, how many, you stay humble, you stay hungry, you keep getting better every day. Okay, that's what really good players do and good teams do. Coach Ash does a great job of getting us all fired up. He uh, coaches us hard. He wants the best out of us, and that's definitely what I look, at, look for in a coach. He's really energetic, he's a fun guy, really love to coach the game, you know, he knows what he's doing and uh, every day every day I go out, you know, I always want to, you know, pick his brain and, uh, you know, just little things for my game. So he's just one of those, you know, coaches that, you know, I could always be around and always learn from. He's a cool guy to be around, you know, he preaches a lot of stuff here and uh, we obey them. So, like, at the same time he has an off-field relationship with you, he'll joke with you, laugh with you. <laughs> You've been practicing, haven't you? Uh-huh, you've been practicing. What's up, bad hair guy? You look a lot better with the helmet on. On the field, it's all about the business, and Coach Ash is a great coach overall. Um, I have a great mind with him, all the players really do, and it's a good person to be around. Now, how about those nuts? <laughs> Hello again, everyone. I'm Bruce Beck, along with the coach. Welcome to another edition of Our Football with Chris Ash. Coach, I know you're not enamored with the term moral victories, but can you use the second half against Indiana as a springboard going forward? 
Well, you're right, Bruce. I, I don't believe in the moral victories, uh, but I do believe in learning and uh, taking away some good things out of a, a game that you lost, and that's exactly what we're going to do. The second half of the game went a lot better. We shut them out. We gave ourselves a chance to get back in the game. Had an opportunity potentially to get the ball back with just under three minutes to go, and then you, know, you don't know what happens. But there were a lot of good things to take from the game, a lot of things we got to still continue to do better. Let's start with the quarterback, because I thought that Art Sitkowski in this game showed a lot of poise, showed, showed a lot of professionalism for a young kid, and he's never rattled. What about his warrior mentality? You know, I, I really like the progress that he's made, the improvements that he continues to make week to week to week, the in-game improvements that he's continued to make. Saturday uh, was probably his best game. It wasn't perfect. He's got a lot of work to do, but he's getting more comfortable. The game is slowing down. He's taking a lot of hits. He's getting back up. He's shaking it off, and he's only going to get better. Let's go back to the opening drive. 10 plays, 75 yards, and a touchdown. When you come out of the gate in that fashion, you employ both the running game and the passing game. What does that do for an offense? We, our emphasis has been to start fast the last couple weeks. Even against Buffalo, I thought we started fast. This week, we needed to start fast again, and we got a touchdown uh, out of it. It just uh, changes the demeanor on the sideline, and it does uh, build confidence in the offense that they can go down the field. Yeah, we just got to do that stuff consistently, though. For the end zone, and it's caught. Touchdown, Shameen Jones. Shameen Jones with the 11-yard touchdown catch. What about the TD? One, it was a great job by Shameen of just getting open. You know, they were in tight coverage. Uh, he got to a spot, and he worked away from the defender, and Art read it and made a great throw, and it was a great catch by Shameen. From the Indiana 45. Halfback pass. Halfback pass, indeed. The check on it, Jerome Washington. Washington his way down to the six-yard line. Now you're down 24 to 7 in the second half, and you use a little bit of razzle dazzle to get back in the football game. Tell me about the call to have Pacheco become your quarterback on the option pass. The formation is one that we do a lot out of, a bunch formation, and we saw that, that they were being really aggressive in, in the run game with that. It's a play that we've had that we've worked uh, uh, quite a bit. We just haven't called it in a game yet, and it had to be the right time. And uh, we, they'd seen a, enough of them uh, really being aggressive, so we called it, and it worked out great. Wish we could have scored a touchdown on it, but we ended up getting points on the board. Hilleman, second effort, he's in. Touchdown, Rutgers. That led to Jonathan Hilleman's touchdown run. When you're down by the goal line, do you like to call upon him? Yeah, Jonathan's that big back that we've been using in short yard situations or down on the goal line. And he excels in, in that role, and, and uh, you know, usually he's getting positive yards. He's going for everything, the end zone, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Damon Hayes, the junior safety. Now you're down 24-14, and Damon Hayes comes up with the pick for the second straight ball game in the end zone, that really gives you life. Oh, absolutely. We needed a big play to happen. We got that, and we got a fumble uh, also in the second half that gave us an opportunity. But Damon Hayes has come up with big plays in the last two games, and it's because he's in the right spot executing the call and uh, goes up and makes a play. So I'm really happy for him, and hopefully he can continue that as we go forward. And then you end up with the Justin Davidovitz field goal that pulls you within seven. A pretty good drive, but a 52-yarder coaches. His best was 41 going in there. Well, he's He's been making those in practice, so we had 100% confidence that he could go out and, and hit. he was going to have enough leg to do it. He just hadn't done it before in a game. So we didn't even flinch. You know, when we got to that situation, we knew we were going to have to get three either then or later. I think the situation was fourth and 14, maybe. It was a, a long fourth down. So Justin go out and hit it, man, and he did. And, and really proud of, uh, for him and uh, what he's been able to do here. And his confidence just continues to grow. Nine players caught passes in this game from your QB, and I look at Bo Melton. He had four grabs. He's someone, do you want to get involved in this action? Yeah, Bo's got to continue to get better, and he has been as we uh, the, the season's been progressing. And I think Saturday was probably Bo's best game since he's been here. He had some you know, some catches and some difficult ones. Um, he had uh, a couple runs. Uh, also, uh, the thing we have to do better with Bo and Art is connect on some of the deep balls down the field. And a heavy dose of Stevie Scott. Got here this time, he definitely lost it. And Rutgers picks it up. Deontay Roberts with a recovery. Deontay Roberts with 14 tackles in this game, and he recovered a fumble. He's everywhere, isn't he? Yeah, he was. He played uh, fast on Saturday. Uh, he was great in the run game. He fit well. He got off blocks. He tackled well. And uh, he's providing a lot of leadership for our guys. 
Kevin Wilkins, 11 tackles in this game. Is he a little underappreciated? Tell me the truth. Uh, he, he is. Uh, Kevin is just pretty steady out there, does his job in the right place. He's really putting a lot of work during the, the course of the, the week at, with practices and trying to improve his game constantly. And he had some really good production, more than he's had in the last couple games. So we've got to continue to improve that. After the game, you talked about two things particularly, the fight and the chemistry of this ball club. Could you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, you know, you're down 24-7 uh, and a half, and it's uh, basically the third week in a row, fourth week in a row, we've been in a negative situation at halftime, unfortunately. And we need to come out and we got to fight. You know, we can't quit. And if you don't have the chemistry and the care and the love for each other in your locker room that uh, we have, you're not, your team's not going to go fight in the second half just, be, just to do it. And I think that shows the, the type of chemistry that we have and the care that we have for each other because of the fight that we put up and gave our, ourselves an opportunity to get back in that game. You say you love your guys. Is the next step loving these guys finishing a ball game as well? We, are, we got a lot of love on our team. I, I love our players. I, I really enjoy coming to work every day and being around them. You know, we work really hard. We try to have a little bit of fun too, but we're working really hard. Uh, but we have to be more accountable to each other. You know, a football team can be full of love, but if we're not holding each other accountable to do our job, you know, we're not going to progress and, and have the results that we want. That's really where we're at right now. Later in the program, we'll preview the game against Illinois this weekend. We'll also meet Jonathan Hilleman. You think I'll like him, Coach? You'll love him. We'll take a short break. More Our Football with Chris Ash coming up. Chris Ash, and this is Jonathan Hilleman, a graduate transfer. He leads the Scarlet Knights with four touchdowns on the season. First of all, how is it going here on the banks for you? It's going pretty good. It's going pretty good personally. I mean, we got, we got to pick it up as a team, but I mean, I definitely feel like we can definitely do it this week. You know, great week of practice, and you know, we, we'll be back in the game. Why did you decide you wanted to enroll at Rutgers and get your graduate degree? Uh, just, I just felt like it would be the best of both worlds coming home, being able to play in front of my hometown fans and family and friends and everything, and kind of being able to finish, you know, my master's degree, which would be awesome, and trying to any aspirations of playing football after on the next level. I mean, it's kind of the best of both worlds, you know. You're kind of a legend at St. Peter's Prep, <laughs> raced for over 2,000 yards. You were all state to come back and see your family and friends, and for them to have the opportunity to watch you play. Is it special? Yeah, it's special. It definitely is. I mean, the first uh, first game of the season was um, definitely running out there. I mean, I kind of was getting a little teary-eyed because it was a little different. It was kind of like, okay, I'm back home. But, I mean, as quickly I snapped out of it and got in the game mode. But, yeah, it's definitely special, I would say. Hillman, the goal line situation, pushes into the end zone for another Rutgers touchdown. What about near the goal line? It seems as though you feast in those situations. Do you like it in the red zone? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, it's weird like that. I mean, my, my mom always says, uh, you know, you kind of, you look like, kind of like I look for contact, you know, on the football <laughs> field. But I mean, yeah, those, those are definitely the most, uh, you know, physical parts of the game. But obviously, it's very important because you got to score down there to win. So, I mean, I kind of definitely, you know, start, you know, kind of seeing red a little bit, you know, down there. With Raheem Blackshear and Isaiah Pacheco, there are three running backs. Yeah. Are there enough opportunities for all of you? Yeah, I mean, definitely it is. I mean, we're definitely you know, working in packages to see us all on the field. I mean, we're very, a very productive group, so I mean, very dynamic. So just, you know, getting us, you know, in space and getting us the ball in different uh, situations, I mean, is, is real key because we're, we're a real productive group. They're, they're real dynamic guys, and, you know, we've got to find a way to give them the ball, you know, in any, any space in the game, you know. How do you view your leadership responsibilities? Because on one hand, you're a newcomer here. Yeah. On the other hand, you're one of the oldest guys. Yeah, it's definitely a, it's definitely a, a weird thing, but like at the balance? same time, yeah, definitely a balance you gotta find. Uh, just earning guys' respect. That was one of the first things I knew coming in is to earn those that title as a, a leader and uh, just coming out there and just handling my business the right way. And then once I got that title, just showing guys, demonstrating how to do things, how to handle their business, and just keeping guys up. You know, when things are down, you know, especially times right now, just keeping them up, keeping them motivated, and just you know, to go to work every day. You know. 
You were very successful during your years at Boston College, but this is a new experience. Right. And now you're in the Big Ten Conference. Right. Is this something that you were looking forward to? Oh, yeah, definitely, 100%. I mean, that was one thing that, uh, a really big thing, besides coming home, was uh, knowing that Rutgers is in the Big Ten and, you know, how much the Big Ten gets a lot of respect all over college football. You know, being able for me to show my stuff in the Big Ten is, is definitely something that was on my mind when I made the decision to come here. So what should we expect from this football team? You showed great growth in the last ball game against Indiana, especially in the second right, half. Right. Can you build off that? Can you use it as momentum going forward? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, that, that's definitely a loss that we can learn from. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, we got kicking a little too late, but I mean, we, we got it going and we kind of showed ourselves what we can do if we just kind of, you know, you know, stick together and just, you know, push a little harder. And I, I feel like, you know, it's a definitely a step in the right direction. Let's talk a little bit about your education. Undergraduate, first of all, what was your goal and what is it now as a graduate student? At Boston College, I graduated with an applied psych and human development uh, major, definitely. I was very, very happy about that. Did it in three and a half years, was really happy about that. But right now, I'm pretty much in the master's program of administrative education. And with that, you know, after my playing days are over, I wish to be an athletic director, you know, in a, at a high school level, just, you know, pretty much just be around the athletes, kind of change the culture and pretty much try to change, you know, the outlook of how the athlete is perceived in society. I feel like it's kind of a, a stigma, kind of athletes are a certain way. I kind of would want, you know, to teach the athletes to, you know, you know, pretty much be well-rounded and be, you know, involved in the community, things like that, and not just be just a, a, a very prominent athlete. So that's that's one of the goals for down the road. That's awesome. How have you balanced academics and athletics all throughout? Uh, just pretty much, I mean, that's kind of just been how, I, how I've been trained since I was really young. I mean, my mom and dad are very you know, strict about that. I mean, you can't do anything until the grades are right. And if they're right, then you can move on and play ball, play, do whatever you want to do. But, I mean, that's pretty much the, the thing right now. I mean, if you, if you don't have that you know, balance, you're not going to be able to go off to college and do certain things. So it's always a very important thing. But, you know, balancing, you know, academics and athletics, I mean, if you do, it translates. If you do well in that academic side, I mean, it translates. Those habits translate on whatever field of play you're in. I would invest in you if I had the opportunity. <laughs> I'll tell you, because I think that there's a lot of great things out there for you in the real world. You ready for the next step, or you want to finish the season first? I got to finish We got to finish the season first. We got a lot of work to do. I feel like we, we got to pull this thing around and, and get the juice back going. But down the road, I mean, I'll, I'll take you up on that, man. Good luck to you. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate that, man. Jonathan Hilleman. I learned a lot just talking to this young man. We'll be back with more Our Football with Chris Ash in a moment. This segment of the show is sponsored by RWJ Barnabas Health. Hi, I'm Dr. Yvette Rooks, Chief Medical Officer for Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health Sports Medicine. Why is water important in the winter? Well, water is important all year round. You need water for good cell function, for good hair growth, and to feel well overall. So don't forget about your water in the winter. Our play of the game is sponsored by Nissan. Intelligent Mobility. So the intelligent mobility play comes down to the option pass. I think it was intelligent, first of all, to call the play. What about the execution, Coach? Uh, it was great. It's something we've been working on in practice. And we saw the defense play in a certain formation and run plays very, very aggressively. And we knew it would be there. We just had to execute it. Uh, Art pitches the ball to Isaiah, uh, uh, Jerome, it kind of blocks and then takes off down the field uh, uncovered. Ball was a little bit behind him. Jerome did a great job to catch the ball, get it tucked away, and, and get down the field for an explosive play that led to a touchdown. I don't know if people understand that Isaiah Pacheco was a quarterback at Vineland South in addition to being a running back and a defensive back. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's all over the field. Uh, Isaiah's got a tremendous skill set. We're very excited about his future. He keeps getting better and better. And we had a freshman toss it to a freshman and threw it to a senior, so uh, pretty cool. And Jerome Washington, he's got the hands and he can run the routes for a tight end. He looks like a guy who someday could play in the NFL if he continues to improve. Uh, absolutely, I've, I've been high on Jerome uh, for a while. Uh, he ended up having a lot of production for us last season. He's getting better 
and better. He missed spring ball, missed a lot of summer, limited in training camp, but he's playing a lot more right now, and he's playing his best football for us. Hey, it's great to include a little razzle-dazzle, but it's got to be good execution, right? Uh, absolutely. We can call a, a, any razzle-dazzle play or gimmick or, or trick play that you want, but if it's not properly executed, it looks bad. And uh, when you can go out there and you can properly execute a play like that, it looks great. We look uh, uh, like smart coaches that way. This game preview is sponsored by HighPoint.com. Be a guy that, that's earning the trust of the coaches. So when we put you in a situation, you're trusted to make that play. Never lose sight of that. We can talk about X's and O's all we want. But we can talk about fundamentals, still blue in the face. At the end of the day, just run really hard and go compete today. Saturday, 12 noon, BTN, Illinois at highpoint.com stadium. All right, Lovey Smith brings in his club to your building this year. What can we expect? Well, they're a much improved football team. Uh, they really focus on running the football right now. They've got a new offensive coordinator, a new system. They have young players that played a lot last year that are in their second year, uh, so they're improved. Defensively, it's Lovey's same system that he's been running for a long time based on effort and fundamentals. Uh, so we're going to have to uh, strap it up and continue to clean up ourselves and our issues to be able to go out and win a football game. Reggie Corbin and Mike Epstein, as you mentioned, their rushing attack, both over 300 yards in the season. When you've got two guys who are really punching it from the line of scrimmage, how much pressure does that put on your defense? Well, they're doing a really good job running the football, and it's part the personnel and then the scheme, that the new system that they put in place. they got a quarterback that's always a threat to run the ball to, and when you've got that you, and you have to account for that, it does open up other holes for the running backs. So we got to do a great job with our gap integrity and being smart. They do a lot of motion and, and slicing tight ends back to try to create confusion uh, for linebackers or where they have to fit, so we've got to have a lot of discipline. Come on, ball. Drive out. Try it. Hey, hey, that's as good as you've done. We go, block the intended receiver. Good, now go, 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 Come on, Rome, sit right there, sit, sit, sit. Good, chin the ball, baby. That's it. You beat them last year in Champaign. Does that carry forward in any way to your psyche? Well, yeah, it is a team that we've, we've played well against and we beat, so uh, I do think that uh, adds a, a level of confidence to your players when, when they've had success against somebody. But this is a new year, a new team, different personnel. We've got to go out and play, and, and they're going to come here and, and expect to play and have a chance to win. Last time they were here, they won. So it's going to be a, a tough, hard-fought game. And finally, what would it mean to get a victory in front of your home fans ending up this homestand? Yeah, it would be everything. We need a Big Ten victory. Uh, I'd love to do it here at home. Uh, we need one just for our players uh, as well as the fans. I think everybody could use one. Coach, good luck. I know it's going to be a good Saturday down here on the banks, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Bruce. Always a pleasure. That's it for this edition of Our Football with Chris Ash. We'll see you on the trail.